Nano Banana Pro just dropped and it's going to change how visual thinking is done across the business. All of the old assumptions that you had, that I had about what AI visuals can do, we have to throw them out the window now. And I'm gonna show you later in the video what I mean. So if you thought, wow, you know, these image generators can't generate text, that's wrong now. If you thought, you know, these image generators can't take a long prompt, that's wrong now. If you thought, you know, these image generators can't do diagrams, they're just incorrect, that's wrong now. If you thought these image generators can't get animated and animate a diagram into a little video, also wrong now. Let's jump in to what Nano Banana Pro is, why it upends all of those assumptions, a little bit of implications for prompting, and then I'm gonna actually show you real images that I generated in Nano Banana Pro toward the end of the video. So let's get to it. Okay, first, what the heck is Nano Banana Pro? It is a visual reasoning model. It is not your old style diffusion model. It is a system that understands layout, it understands structure, it understands diagrams, it understands typography, data, brand grammar, style universes. It's effectively, it's a layout engine with a diagram engine, with a data visualization engine and a style engine all inside one model. It is capable of generating finished visual artifacts in one shot, dashboards, diagrams, editorial spreads, blueprints. It treats text and image and charts as inputs and they're all co-equal and they're all composable elements. It can separate really dense multi-constraint prompts into an orderly fashion and execute on them without collapse. It sort of functions as if Tableau and InDesign and Figma all had a baby. I wanna lay out what I call the key breakthroughs of Nano Banana, and I'm gonna describe them as engines because they are driving the results that we see, but I do not know what the technical breakthrough is for this model. Nobody online does. The team at Google did magic with this, for lack of a better term. So the first thing to call out is that Nano Banana Pro, it really does have a layout engine. It has some magic inside it that enables it to understand grids, gutters, margins, columns. It can create structured one-pagers. It maintains alignment and spacing and type hierarchy. And by the way, when I say magic, I suspect what the Google team will say is that they just used good old pre-training or good old post-training. Like some of the classic reinforcement learning techniques, some of the classic AI scaling techniques may just work great when scaled up. That is often the answer. So it's got a layout engine. Two, it's got a diagram engine. It can convert structured text into clean diagrams. If you want an example of this, I was able to take a ArcSiv academic AI paper today and convert it over and get a visual on the difference that adversarial prompting in poetry makes versus adversarial prompting without poetry. Silly topic, except apparently it's quite effective. But I got a nice little visual of what the paper called out and Nano Banana did it in one shot. It's got a text and typography engine. It can do sharp text at small sizes. It can do multi-line paragraphs. It works for charts. I can ask it to do handwriting. I saw someone do a prompt where they got it to write backwards and upside down in perspective as Shakespeare was writing something facing you on the desk. I don't know how they did that, right? Like that is, that is really phenomenal. It is also a data visualization engine, so it's able to accurately translate numbers it sees in, for example, earnings reports into charts. That's a huge deal. We do that all the time. That has been painful for a long time. Not anymore. It is a style engine as well. It can maintain a consistent style across multi-element composition. So for example, when I asked it to do a Lego style, it did a viable, stable Lego style over multiple iterations. I asked it to do a blueprint style. It can do a retro sci-fi style. We are just scratching the surface here. It also can do styles within styles. I asked it to do a corkboard style and then have handwritten notes on the top of the corkboard. So it can do that kind of thing as well. It understands and applies brand palettes and logos. This is going to be huge for marketers. And finally, it is a representation transformer. And so you can express the exact same concept and Nano Banana Pro will understand it. And you can express it as a blueprint or an infographic or a magazine spread or a storyboard or yes, a Lego scene. And it can maintain semantic integrity across all of those representations. So surfaces, are really becoming interchangeable. And the only thing you need to know is like, 
what do I want this represented as? It almost becomes a parameter so that Nano Banana can just decide what to do. Now, if you're wondering how can I get Nano Banana Pro, I wish I could tell you that Google had solved their age old problem and made this as easy to access as ChatGPT. They have not. I am accessing Nano Banana Pro in the Google AI Studio, and they helpfully ask you to provide an API key to use the tool. And I do, and it's not that hard because I know how to set up an API key. But for those of you who don't, I will include a little note in my Substack post on how to get a Google API key. It really is a very fast process. It's not scary and it allows you to access this kind of power. Do you, do you know why they do that besides being annoying? I think part of why is because this is a sort of token spendy model and they want to make sure that the people who use it the most are able to pay their way. This model can generate 4K image resolution images, and I'll show them to you in just a moment here. That is something that we haven't had either, right? Like you've had Nano Banana generate stuff and it's been like a 500 pixel image and it doesn't stand up and you zoom in and it doesn't work. That is increasingly going away and it is blowing my mind. I have had one of those jaw dropping on the floor AI moments today. So before we get into it, let me just briefly say there's a reason why I'm talking about this. It's not just because of the pretty pictures. This matters because Nano Banana provides us a new shortcut route to finished artifacts, not drafts. AI is jumping from helpful assistant to finished output generator here because the outputs are reaching the fidelity that you would need for executives, for clients, for onboarding, for teaching. And what's interesting is it is so easy that it's going to unlock a whole bunch of new use cases. I think the academic paper one is a phenomenal example. No one would ever spend the time to make an infographic of a paper about adversarial poetry and prompting, but now we can, so why not? But this thing collapses workflows, right? Like because it can produce those outputs so cleanly, it can go from diagramming to an automated generation straight up. From dashboard creation, you can just automate it. From concept art, you can just automate it. Editorial layouts, automate that. You get the idea, right? I could go through one pagers, brand collateral, the list goes on. This is going to eliminate design bottlenecks like crazy, right? Because just as anyone can now vibe code, anyone can now produce pro-grade visuals. It reduces a lot of dependency on design bandwidth. Now, of course, I'm gonna have designers in my comments saying it is not as good as what we do. And you are right. A excellent senior designer is going to run circles around anything that AI can generate. But we have so few excellent senior designers and we would like you guys to be able to do useful, interesting work that is super meaningful. And I tell you what, a lot of the stuff that we're doing for visuals and charts around the office is not super meaningful. It just has to get done for the client meeting, right? It's a quick sketch we have to do to show the concept to engineering. That is all unlocked. All of that inter-office work, even some of the client work, like I will show you guys, I am impressed. It may not be exciting, but the client facing stuff, like I was able to get an entire Google earnings 10Q, like their earnings statement into Nana Banana. I, I pasted the PDF in and it turned the entire earnings statement into a usable infographic that talked about the earnings for Google this quarter. One shot. It's incredible. And what's interesting is because this is now in the API, think about the agent implications. Agents can now generate diagrams. Agents can generate dashboards. Agents can summarize PDFs visually. They can update onboarding assets. There is an entire class of visual communication that just became machine native. Really, the larger take here is like beyond agents, beyond people, we are unlocking visual thinking and democratizing it. Previously, you had to kind of be good at visuals. I am terrible at drawing, guys. But you had to kind of be good at visuals to do visual thinking or else you were a consumer of visual thinking. And one of the longstanding complaints in the era of AI has been we never solved that. We can generate pretty pictures of dragons. We cannot write a work diagram. But now everybody can communicate in a sophisticated visual mode. You can do cheap disposable surfaces that are just what you need. You can try dozens of them and keep the one you want. You can try complex concepts and storyboard them six different ways. This is an entirely new way of working and it's going to create new work surfaces as first class outputs. We are going to start to see a lot more storyboards. We're gonna to start to see a lot more mechanical cutaways, architectural blueprints. Gone are the days when you have the really 
bad drawings of people with six fingers in the CEO slide deck. We are instead going to see sophisticated UX flows outlined and you won't be able to tell who made them. It's just going to be a nice 4K image that entirely works and keeps you focused on the work, which is what we should have had from the beginning. So the thing that I wanna call out here is that when this is in everybody's hands, we all get better at doing this kind of visual thinking. And a lot of work is visual. A lot of work requires us to understand complex concepts in a simplified way. Some people are visual learners. This is an absolute godsend to those of us who learn visually. And so I don't see this and say, oh my gosh, designers are doomed. I see this and say, oh my gosh, we're not gonna have to suffer through so many bad PowerPoints. Oh my gosh, we're going to be able to communicate what we wanna say to engineers in a way that's easy to understand. Oh my gosh, the client presentations are gonna suck less. Like there's a lot of positives here and they're all promptable now. What are the implications for prompting? I'm gonna go into implications for prompting and then yes, I've been promising it all video. I am gonna show you some nano banana images at the end. I, I do this at the end because there are people who don't wanna see them. Uh, implications for prompting, use complex block structured prompts. You want to have clear task definition, clear style definition, clear layout. This thing can understand this stuff and keep it separate. So be clear, right? Intended audience, constraints. Always, always, always define your work surface. Instead of saying, just make a diagram, it would be great if you said instead, create a left to right architecture diagram. I'd like you to group clusters and swim lanes and label your nodes. Like being more specific and specifying the kind of diagram you want is way more helpful there. It is helpful to use component lists when you're making detailed asks of Nano Banana. Literally, you can list it, the components. I want KPI blocks. I want some mini pie charts. I want some icons. I want a summary panel. Say what you want, right? Put it in the list. Use constraints when you are worried about stabilizing outputs. You can say things like don't overlap labels. It will listen. Say AI text must be sharp at small sizes. Say you must keep even spacing between nodes. Just be clear, right? And that gets you to consistency. The model has good instincts in that direction, but I find that it doesn't hurt to remind it. Nano Banana loves structured input. If you can feed it lists or tables or hierarchies or metrics, it can read and understand that structure and translate that structure. It also loves clarity of style. Tell it the kind of style you want. And this is a case where designers are way ahead of us. I am having to reach for style descriptions. We need a clean universe of style that we can name, describe, and prompt with for this model. Sort of like we have these sort of promptable styles that we've developed in mid-journey. We need something similar for Nano Banana Pro. Finally, if you wanna know how to put it all together, separate the what, put the what at the top in this case, the task, put the how, the style, the layout, the components there, put the why, the interpretation there. This tends to mirror design briefs and you can just attach a few images if you need to, because yes, you can add images. Nano Banana Pro can take those images, use them verbatim, use them as inspiration. You will have to define how it uses them and then let it go to town. And look, I, I wanna be honest with you. You do need more sophisticated prompts for more sophisticated work, but just a simple prompt will still produce good work in this model. And that is always a mark of, of a good model, right? A useful model. It doesn't take a PhD to prompt it to get useful results. And with that, let's jump in and let's finally see what Nano Banana looks like. Okay, here we are. I actually used Gamma to put a little presentation together. Uh, it's very meta, right? It's about Nano Banana. These are all Nano Banana images. You see how the text is so clean here. This is actually a full 4K image that is the story of a prompt. It talks in fun language, fun designs about the latent realm, about concrete, clever wording. You can see that like, even though the text is small, almost all of it is clean, clear, and readable. Uh, and Nano Banana itself has come up with really cl clever ideas for representation. Like these bell curves are the forest of patterns and they're represented over trees. Like that's a wonderful example of fusing conceptual thinking with images. The core innovation, this is computational media. And I'm not gonna stay here very long. You guys have heard me yak long enough, but it is critical to understand that we are not just generating images better, we're generating them in ways that we never could before. And I think the Space Needle illustration is great here. This took an image that was just a regular daytime shot of the Space Needle, not from this angle, by the way. It converted it into a top-down look with clean, clear architectural diagrams explaining what the Space Needle looks like. And it is actually like, this is exactly what it looks like. If you walk up close to it, it's in perspective correctly. It tilted it up. 
like I'm amazed. And all of this is readable, right? Like you see that like th this is all readable dimensions. If I had given it actual dimensions, it would have put them on here correctly. This is what I was referring to with the earnings report. Google's entire earnings for the quarter in one slide, one shot. I just said, here, read it and please give me an overarching perspective. My, my jaw is on the floor. Like this is this is insane. And look, all of the text is readable. It looks like a PowerPoint slide. It just happens to be generated by Nano Banana. Technical drafting, like I, I use this one for fun, but you can see how you can do quite complex drafts and you can do quite complex uh, different layouts and you can analyze and compare different relationships between objects really clearly. This is new AI work surfaces, but you could really do it for anything you defined a prompt for. Style condition visual universes. This is actually a nano banana image. Again, like people don't believe me, but like it, they just went with Lego style and all of the text is there. You can see that it has superimposed these fun images over the top in visual space. It has this really fun 3D effect with shadowing under the Lego. I just, I'm lost for words. Like it's really amazing. This one is the adversarial poetry one. It came out again with this nice clean synthesis all the text is clean it even uses logos look the logos all work and look at this you actually see the point right here poetic transformation dramatically increases the the impact of adversarial prompting somehow poetry works when other things don't these are like i don't know 100 percent automation right? you can call it whatever you want like i i don't care whether you think it's 5x or 2x or 4x the point is that this is a breakthrough and it's a big deal. It does have the ability to do domain specific visual grammar. If you want finance or safety or product or architecture, it's not a problem. And we're just going to skip the boring text slide at the end here. I'm going to put this in the sub stack if you want to read through it. And we're going to get to the last part. These are visual reasoning models. I wanted to give you a little bit of the like superimposed effect here. This is a full Lego diagram description of the AI powered product team, and it includes challenges associated with building with AI. What is generative AI chaos, generative noise? How do you handle vibe coding? All of it is here and it's all in a Lego theme and it could change to a different theme at the drop of a hat. So there you go. This is why I'm excited. We have not had this. We have dreamed of this for two years. It's out now. Now I fully grant you, Putting it in AI Studio and sticking it behind an API key is a crime. And I'm sure they will fix that soon, but don't let it block you. It's so easy to get an API key and you are off to the races on doing this stuff for yourself. I'm gonna include a library of like a couple of dozen prompts that I've come up with for getting you started in the Substack post because I think there is no reason to wait. We have solved visual reasoning. Let's go have fun. Cheers.